together here in your name and share your word God Lord that you would just help help us to receive it and God just apply it to our lives Lord we just love you for it today and God we just bless your name and Lord I pray it will truly be our desire to put you first in everything that we do and God as we're getting ready to enter into a, a new year God we just pray that you'll help us to focus on uh, God not so maybe the, maybe there's a lot of bad things that went on this past year a lot of things we wish wouldn't have happened but Lord, it is what it is, and Lord, we're just knowing we're facing a new year, and we're just asking you to help us to renew our commitment, to renew our faithfulness to you, first and foremost, God, because Lord, really, when we do that, everything else kind of falls into place, and so Lord, we just pray today you be with us, we thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, this morning, I just ask that we anoint her with uh, oil and pray for her today. And if you would like to also be anointed this morning and just pray for for any particular need today, we'll be glad to pray with you as well. But we do want to pray for her. She's a sick pass that we want to pray for her today. So whether it's a physical need or just whatever it is, just feel free to come. We're just going to trust God to touch. Kim is having the surgery this week, Thursday, on her knee. And, so, and uh, also, let's be remembering, is it Kathy, right? Miss Kathy, right there, she was supposed to have some, but uh, she's dealing with some, some issues on her leg right now, so let's pray for her as well. And if you, any others of you have any needs, feel free to come. We'll be glad to pray with you also this morning. Levi, yeah, we'll pray for Levi. Sure will. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Would you just reach your hand out for it for Kim? Amen. Father, we just thank you, God, today for, for Kim. And Father, Lord, we know the anxiety that, that comes upon us at times, God, when we're facing something like surgery. And God, I just thank you, Lord, that you're going to go before her. And I know, God, that, Lord, you will, God. I pray, Father, God, <coughs> Lord, you would just bring healing to her body. We know, God, that you are the ultimate healer, but we also know, Lord, you, you choose to use doctors at times. And Lord, we do pray for her the doctor and all those who will be assisting that God, Lord, the skills and abilities you've given them, God will just be used to the fullest capacity in the name of Jesus, that as always God, you put your hands upon their hands, your thoughts into their thoughts, and, and God, just God, just move by your spirit, and just let there be a peace that settles over my sister, God, Lord, God, just to know that, God, you have this, and God, you know all things, and as said so many times, God, and I believe with all my heart that nothing catches you by surprise or catches you off guard the things that we go through as your children. So, Lord, we're thankful for that. We ask God for just your special touch this week in her life and her body, especially her knee. In Jesus' name, amen. Sermon for you, probably didn't. I? Anyway. I'm just kidding. 
Well, it's good to have you here this morning. Again, I want you to look at your neighbor. Okay? And say, there's a reason for your season. Amen. You ever just feel like you go through stuff in life that you'd rather not have gone through? And uh, you just trust God that there is a purpose for it all? Amen. I know that a lot of you are there. You've been there. You will be there if you've never been there before. But there is a reason for your season. There's a scripture in the Bible. Uh, and Ethan, I've got some notes back there. Um, if you wouldn't mind if you could bring those up. Uh, but there's a place in the Bible where it says, To everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. And you see, we serve a God of season. We see it in his creation. In Genesis 8, 22, it says this, As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. And just think about the different seasons. And as I just thought about the seasons and what they actually happen during those seasons, I, I think there's some spiritual applications we can make. But in a minute, I'm going to share with you about Peter, one of the disciples who has a lot that I think we can all relate to in some way, some of the seasons he went through. But let's just look at the seasons that God has given us. First, let's look at spring. Spring is a time for planting. It's a time for new beginnings. It's a time for sowing. Something new. And that's kind of when we're entering into a new year, we're thinking, okay, what do I want to sow? What do I want to do this year? You know, so that later on, as the year progresses, I'll be able to reap the blessings and benefits of that. Some of us, it may have something to do with our, of course, or definitely our spiritual life. You know, I want to read through the Bible this year. I want to read... Uh, or listen through the Bible, just whatever it is, your spiritual goals you want to do. I want to uh, discipline myself to start getting up more, maybe early in the morning or something like that, and, and spend time with God. And you start setting these goals, and, and you, you start, that's kind of sowing, and you're planting, and you're doing something new. And, you know, we don't want to look at this just as a resolution, but it's something you're asking God to help you to do. So in spring, it's about new beginnings. You know, it's kind of like 2017, believe it or not, is it's coming gone. Isn't that amazing? Just a blink. Someone was saying earlier, we blinked and there it's gone. And, and, and so, but now it's the time, it's a new year. It's a time where we can kind of just kind of reflect. And, and, and as we go forward, Lord God, what, I want you to do some, certain, some things in my life. You know, it could be physical goals as far as your, your exercise habits and things like that. But whatever it is, uh, you know, you, it's kind of what spring is all about. It's about something new. It's about sowing something, hoping to reap something, the benefits of it later. <coughs> and then there's summer. Summer is kind of like, you know, it's a time of harvest. Of course, you plant in the spring. Some, you harvest some things in the summertime. But also the thing I, I, I notice about summer is this, is the grass grows. You have to cut it. <laughs> you know, y'all ever notice that? And it just grows. And, and the more it rains, the more it grows. And the more times you have to cut it. Finally, your lawnmower, if you're not careful, get all stopped up because you've let it go too far. And, and, and so, but really think about it in the spiritual sense. You know, it's kind of in the summertime. It is a time of harvest, but I think it's also a time of maintaining. Where you have to maintain, like if, if you're doing some a garden, you have to what? You've got to keep the weeds out of it. You've got to do some things. And you're having to maintain. And sometimes, you know, summertime can be a time where, you know, it's, it can be kind of tough to maintain, okay? Because you've got a lot of things going on. you got... Camp's going on, we got vacations going on. If we're not careful, we even find ourselves taking a vacation from God. Okay? And there's just those points in your life, seasons in your life, where you just have to maintain and just keep, uh, like the Bible says, not grow weary and well-doing. And so that's kind of what summer kind of is to me. Fall is kind of another time for a harvest, but it's also a time of, of reaping and harvesting your, your, your vegetables and what have you, but it's... But it's also a time, I think, a little bit of reflection about, you know, here and now, we started back in January, now we're in the fall season. I think you kind of start to reflect back on what you intended to do at the beginning of the year. You kind of see where you're at right now. And it can either make you happy or it can make you depressed. <laughs> okay? You can kind of get happy. Hey, I feel like I've really accomplished some things this year. Or you just think, you know what, I'm just going through the same routine and the same rut. And it just seems like things never change in my life. And so, you know, it can be a good thing. It also can be a time of, you know, where it's not so good for you. And then the winter, you think about winter time. Winter is where we think of things that the, everything just kind of lies dormant. You know, it's not that it's dead. It's just lying dormant. Okay. It seems like it's dead. You go and all the leaves are off the trees and, 
and, and, and everything, but it, it's just a dormant time. But it can be a time for me, I think, of, of like deeper reflecting. Like we're coming into the end of this, uh, this year, we're entering the winter season, and I think it's a time you can kind of look back on your year and you kind of just really deeply reflect on, you know, on different things and maybe some things that need to die in your life. Okay, maybe there's some things you tried this year and you say, well, that didn't work out at all. And so it's like, you know, uh, let's get rid of that and let's try and let's ask God for, to help me to do something that uh, different or just something. It's a time of deep reflection. Some things may need to die or what can you do differently. But here's an interesting thing I found as I was researching this. Scientifically, I said, you know, I wanted to know, I'm just that kind of a guy that likes to know why things work the way they do. You know, like, why is the sky blue? Why is this? Why is that? And so, of course, I asked the question, what really causes the seasons? What, what scientifically happens that causes seasons to happen? And this is what I found in my research. Scientifically, the cycle of seasons is caused by the Earth's tilt toward the sun as it rotates around the sun. Okay? And I thought, man, that is awesome. And just like the Earth, I thought, how do we, during uh, a season... Uh, you know, how are we, are, what is our tilt toward God? Okay, when we're going through seasons in life, sometimes it's a, it's, a, it's a great season, but sometimes it's a hard season. And, you know, it's based on, the season's based on your tilt toward the sun. And I'm thinking, you know what, no matter what season we're in, we need to always kind of make sure that we're tilted toward the sun, right? The sun of God. And I thought that's awesome. Because like in the summertime, the, the earth is tilted more toward the sun, and the wintertime is tilted uh, away from the sun. And so that's where that happens. And so, but it all revolves around the sun. And I just thought that was such a, an awesome application. Our lives are like the earth. They revolve around the sun, Jesus Christ. Our lives will change and we will enter into and exit many seasons. But the sun, the son of God remains constant yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He's always going to be there. So no matter what season you're going through in life, you know, the sun is always going to be there. You know, and it could be a good season, it could be a rough season, just depending on what, what's happening in your life. There are seasons you don't want to go through, you didn't want to go through. But how many knows that through those seasons, maybe you learn some things? You learn some things. There are seasons you've gone through that you don't know why you had to. But there, look at your neighbor again and say, but there's a reason for your season. Amen. Just because you've gone through a rough season, listen, doesn't mean God is finished with you. Okay? Sometimes that's exactly what the enemy will try to do. He'll think, well, God's finished with you. You went through this hard time. You didn't handle it too well, so God said, You're, that's it. But I love this scripture. It's found in Philippians 1 6. It'd be a great scripture for you to memorize. It says, He who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So, what God has started working in you, He's not giving up on the task. If anybody gives up, it's us. Right? Not God. He's always going to be there. All right? But he says he promises that he will complete the good work that he began in you. And so, again, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to look at the life of Peter here for just a couple minutes. Peter went through some seasons in his life. And as we look at his life, I believe we'll see some reasons for the seasons he went through, the seasons of life. One reason, I believe, for the seasons we go through in life is this. Stepping into a new season brings new changes. New changes. Changes are inevitable, right? I mean, you can look at 10 years ago and see how things have changed. All right? I mean, they're inevitable. Just look at the world. But God created the seasons, and each season changes occur. In one season, things grow, and another season, they die. In one season, things, days are longer, and another season, nights just seem to be longer. Sometimes it seems like in your own life, maybe the days you go through, the, the good times, you know, you wish they were longer. But then there's those nights you go through and you wish, man, I wish this could come to an end. And some, sometimes it feels like it never will. So let me ask some of you adults here this morning, how many remember when you was a kid and you looked forward to summer when you was in school, right? Yeah, I know I did. I didn't want summer to end. I mean, I hated that day. And bless my mom, she's in heaven now and all. But I hated when she would come through the house singing... School days, school days, even golden rule days, reading, writing, arithmetic, and I can't remember all the words, but it's like, it's like ingrained in my head 
And every time I would just, I would just go into the deep, dark depression almost when she would start singing that song. I'd go, oh, it means summer is over. And now I've got to go back to school. I just wish it could be summer all the time. Okay, but the fact is we have to go through those seasons. We love the summertime as far as that part goes. But let's be honest, we need to learn. We need to grow. We need to go to school and learn some things. And, and looking at Peter, he entered a new season when Jesus called him uh, to come and follow him. It was a season of change for Peter. Listen, Matthew chapter 4, I'm going to read it. You'll see it up on the screen here. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And then he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they immediately left their nets and followed him. So listen, one day uh, Peter was just an ordinary man until Jesus came walking by. Amen. I'm telling you, sometimes you go through life and it's ordinary, but then all of a sudden Jesus comes walking by in your life and he says, come and follow me and I'll make you this or I'm going to do this in your life. But it requires change. And that's what he said. He said, follow me and I'll make you into something that you're not right now. Okay, Peter, as a matter of fact, if you remember the story, when, when Jesus did the miracle of the fish right there in the boat there, and he, he told Peter to cast the net out on the other side because they'd been fished and hadn't caught anything all night. But then they caught this huge amount of fish, and Peter knew that something awesome had happened. But he looked at himself and said, Lord, get away from me. I am a sinner. I mean, you're holy and awesome, and you're doing miracles, and I'm, I'm a sinner. And Jesus said, if you'll just follow me, I'm going to make something out of you. You don't see it, but I already know what I want to do with your life. And I'm going to make you a fisher of men. And there's going to be a change that's going to have to take place. So Peter stepped into a new season, a season of change. He was made into, changed into, transformed into what God intended him to be all along. As we said this in Sunday school this morning, I believe God has a purpose for every individual on this earth. I believe that with all my heart. But I also believe the devil has come in to try to steal, kill, and destroy and try to get them off track into this or into that, whatever it is that he uses of this world to get their attention and, and pulls them away from God's intended purpose. But really, this was the purpose of Peter all along. But it took until this time, this season that Peter had to go through to get him to this point where now he was ready to start something new. Now he was ready to, to go into this season. He didn't understand it, but he was going to trust this Jesus uh, to help him to, to go through this new, this new walk that he was about to encounter with him. And so it was, a, uh, it was a season of change. In other words, Jesus was going to make Peter into something he wasn't before. And it's interesting, that word make. He says, I'll make you into fishers of men. That word make can also mean and be translated to spring forth. You know? And so you think about it. This was really Peter's spring season because he was now springing forth into something They've never done before. And maybe that's what God's wanting to do. Maybe that's what season you're in right now. Maybe God's wanting to do something new in your life this year. And he's wanting to cause that to spring forth and come and make you into something maybe you're not right now. And we just have to realize that that's what he's trying to do. So think about it. Springs associated with birth, new beginnings, fertilization, planting. It's, we kind of associate our own birth with spring as well as the beginning of a new day. Think about it. Every new day is, a, is like spring. Every new week or even a new year is kind of like springing forth into something brand new. And so that's what Peter was doing. Peter's new season had begun and it would mean change. And the problem is we don't like change a lot of times. Okay, some of us are, you know, some of us are okay with it. Some of us are more flexible than others. But there's some people that just says, you know what? I'm just comfortable where I'm at. And I don't like change. I don't like. I like routine. I like to know what's going on, when it's going on, how it's going to go on, and all that kind of stuff. But when you give your life to God, it doesn't happen that way. I mean, because God has to do some things to produce change in you, and sometimes change is not fun. But go ahead and look at your neighbor again. And say, "There's a reason for your season." All right. So again, first of all, stepping into a new season means change. And then second thing, and I know you all know this, stepping into a new season brings new challenges. New challenges. When Peter was called to follow Jesus, he faced a lot of challenges. His faith was challenged. His faith was challenged when he saw Jesus coming out on the water and his faith, he goes, there was a part of him that says, I want to get out there where Jesus is at. 
But then there's another part of him that says, but that's kind of dumb because he's out in the storm and I'll drown. Okay? But his faith was challenged to, to step out and to trust Jesus in the middle of a storm. And maybe if you're in that season right now, maybe that's what God's saying you need to do. You just need to trust Him and step out and just trust Jesus in whatever you're going through and just, and just know that He's going to keep you above water. Amen? As long as you keep... It was the fe February and it was the middle of the winter. So we live in the woods in North Carolina, so it's... When it, and they're all hardwood trees, so when it's... When it's so I was just sitting there and the Holy Spirit said, Melissa... Um, don't you love how far you can see? And I was like, what? And he's like, look, like, look through. Look how far you can see right now. And he said, don't you love the clarity that winter brings? And I was just like, okay. And he was like, do you, do you feel anxiety in the trees? Like, do they, do they feel anxious that they'll never have leaves again and bloom again? And and I was like, Lord, of course they don't, you know. And he's like, I want you to, I want to teach you something about this. Like there's a confidence and a security in my heart. Do not misinterpret this season. And it, it was just a, a huge growth moment for me. And I just thought of how ridiculous it would be, you know, to run into the, the woods in the middle of winter and be like, don't worry, like you'll bloom again, spring will come, like, because they, they're so rooted and grounded, they know they're going to bloom again, like there's, there's no, like, oh man, I wonder if I'll ever have leaves again, it's because they get the necessity of seasons of rest and barrenness to the fruitfulness of their spring and their harvest. And you open up the scripture with David, and he's like, the greatest worship leader that ever lived. But you read his life and it's a mess. Like there's so much tension in his whole life. So many moments of massive tension, you know? And But out of that tension, the best music that has probably ever been written came from a broken, bleeding heart. And so for us, like, I love for, I love for people to know, like behind these albums that look glossy and gorgeous and we look great, like there's a lot of mess. I had someone ask me one time, like, pray for me and give me your anointing to write songs. Like, you don't want that, because all of our songs have come out of fire. Amen. For that, it's used out there, just looking to those barren trees. And he said, look how far you can see. Look how far you can see now. What is all the hardships you've been through, some things now you can see further than you've ever seen before. I love what he said that, you know, that here was King David, man of God. Man, his, he had a lot of things he dealt with. But he, he wrote some of the greatest psalms and you can go there and find comfort today, you know, when you're going through stuff. But it's all because you go through seasons. And all those seasons serve a purpose. Serve a purpose. So, don't know where your season is right now, but just know there's a reason for your season. And just ask God to help you. That during whatever season you're going through, you'll be like the earth. And you'll tilt toward the sun. Amen? No matter what the season is, that you'll be tilted toward Jesus Christ. And just put your life in His hands. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank You for this day. I thank You for all that You do. Lord, there's so much that You do that we're not even aware of. And Lord, I just know there's people in this room right now. Maybe some may be watching by way of the internet. God, just... They go, are going through a season, maybe a rough season for them right now, maybe a depressing season, discouraging season. Like Peter, Lord, who, who felt like I followed this man for three years, and yet when he needed me the most, I, I was not there for him. Maybe there's some in here that felt like, you know, I've been a follower of Christ for years, and yet I just feel like maybe God can't use me, or God has kind of rejected me or whatever, but what you need to understand is you're just going through seasons. Maybe a season of barrenness so that you can really begin to see further than what you've been able to see in the past. Because we learn through the hardships, we learn through the barrenness, we learn through the trials. It's like someone said, the reason that the, uh, when we take tests, they said, do you ever notice how the teacher is silent when you're going through tests? 
because he's wanting to see what you've learned. And those are seasons that we go through. If you're here this morning and you just want to say, God, Lord, thank you for helping me. Thank you, Lord, for showing me, God, the seasons that are just coming. These are seasons that you created physically, but Lord, there's also seasons that have spiritual application in our lives. And Lord, thank you for helping me to see this morning that what I'm going through now doesn't have to remain forever. That it's just a season. It's a season that as long as I tilt towards you, I always, Lord, come out on the winning side. I'll always be better for it. So Lord, help us not to quit or or throw in the towel, or, or Lord, follow you from a distance. But Lord, would you just draw us close? Would you draw us close to you this morning? Would you just do a work in us, God, right now? Come on, if you need God to do that, I just if you just want to come out of your seat and find a place of prayer, or you just want to stand right where you are, and maybe just worship the Lord in your own way, and just say, thank you, Lord, God, that Lord, I know it's a season, but I... And it may be a good season for you. You can thank Him for that. But it may be kind of a rough season. And maybe we still need to thank Him even in that. And so could we just stand together right now and just in your way, just kind of give yourself to God. As we're going into this new year, we're going into this fast. God wants to do some things in your heart and in your life. And I just pray that as we do get ready to go into this fast, that you'll just just realize that this is a season for you. This is a uh, it can be your spring where you're springing into the new things that God wants to do in your life this year. Maybe you're tired of following God from a distance because maybe you felt like a failure. And now you understand that, hey, the grace is there, the mercy is there, the love is there. All I've got to do is make the choice to accept it and get back on track where Jesus wants to take me, what He created me to be. He made Peter just who was a regular fisherman into a fisher of men. And he wants to do something just awesome in your every individual life in this room. But we can't do it if we're falling from a distance. We can't do it if we think this season is something that will just always be and, and God's given up on us. God will never give up on you. Hallelujah. He'll never give up on you. If you're here this morning just and you, you're going through a tough time, just let God know. He already knows about it. And just... Thank Him. Thank Him. Just thank Him that He's going to bring you through this season. And ask for His strength by the Holy Spirit just to help you to keep your tilt toward the Son of God. Just no matter what's going on, you just keep your focus on Jesus. Just like Peter, when his faith was challenged, had to keep his eyes on Jesus or he would sink. And he did, but Jesus lifted him up even after that because he cried out to Jesus. So Lord, we cry out to you today, Lord God. I just pray for every person in this room that's going through some stuff in their life, God, I just pray for them. And if you would like just to be prayed for this morning and you're going through some stuff and you just say, Brother Mike, I just want you to just pray for me this morning. You can do that one of two ways, but lift your hand, I'll pray for you. If you want to come up front, I'll be glad to pray for you personally this morning. But if you just need the prayer today, just feel free just to come and we'll pray for you this morning. And just ask God to help you in this season you're going through. Thank you, Father. Father, I just thank you, Lord God, that thank you for spring, thank you for new life, thank you for summer, God. Lord, even thank you for fall and thank you for winter, Lord God, when things get kind of where it looks lifeless in our lives at times, God. But Lord, it's like the woman said there in the testimony, those trees knew that they weren't dead, they just... They were dormant right now because God was doing something great, something awesome, preparing them for a new season. And God, maybe that's where some of us are at. We feel in that place of dormancy and there's the leaves have fallen off and we feel just ugly and, and then just bare. But Lord, the fact is you're, you're going to bring us into a new season if we'll just keep our eyes on you and keep tilting like the earth does toward the sun and we'll just keep our tilt towards you, Lord. So, God, today I pray you just touch every person, touch every uh, person in this room, God, to know that whatever they're going through, God, you know. And whatever season they're in, there's a reason for it. And we just ask for your strength and your wisdom to, to deal with it, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So don't forget. Uh,